But I, I've always been curious, like, how do you know, like, you can rap? Like, what, when I was young, I tried to rap, right? Like, I think we all, yeah, yeah. We all tried to rap. Man. All of us athletes yeah, try to rap. Like, <laughs> I, I suck at this. I'm terrible. Chucky Online, we're back again, yeah, with another special one. I got my guys with me, Jason, OC, two-time Super Bowl winner. Twice. Talk to you properly. Twice. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? My Two God. of them in the bag. Yes, sir. You get me? <laughs> but, you know, as I said to you a bunch of times before, this is like my favourite bit, do you know what I mean? Because I get to bring you into my world. The artist that I got with me today... I've actually never, we've never sat and had a conversation before. We ain't, we ain't chopped it up. Yeah. But I don't know if he's aware, there's been a few times on my own pod where I've sat and I've like given this guy a lot of praise because I feel like there's something happening with him at the moment. And also at the end of the year where I always do my list, like I just do it for fun, favourite albums, projects, all of that type of stuff. He's in there somewhere, mm. you know what I mean? There's a placement thing that's going on. I don't know where in the top 10... He is, but he's in there somewhere. I've got millions with me while I'm going, my brother. Oh, go on, bro. You only, it's in there, you know. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> I don't like the placement thing, though. Now we got to, I'm just got to work that out. <laughs> all, all I've got to do is I've just got to work out, like, how much I'm listening to certain things or whatnot, okay. just for my own thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Chucky, don't ruin the conversation, <laughs> man. We, we, you know, we want this to flow good. So. Nah, there's, there's, there's a lot of projects. Don't ever get it twisted, yeah. There's a lot of projects out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But not everyone can come. Not everyone can make it. How does it feel for you? What's been going on with you? Um, it's all right, you know. I dropped my first tape the other day, like last month or a month and a bit ago. It's going with the flow, really. Just going with the flow? Yeah. Because you imagine that you would have at some point even have got this far with getting it out there like that? That wasn't in my imagination when I started, so it's literally this. When you've got no um, expectation, though, you just kind of just got to keep going, innit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny, yeah, because even with, like, the, the expectation thing, I was having a private conversation about this before, it's like, the goalposts have changed in terms of, like, what people can see as achievable now. Do you know what I mean? Even though you've come from where you come from, knowing that you come from and all these type of things, you're still seeing an element of, well, like, I can actually, there's a possibility of me cutting through if I take this thing seriously. Yeah, of course. 100%. That's how it started, really, because obviously I was just started rapping to rap like everybody. Well, not everybody else, but I started rapping to rap, really, because obviously my friends are saying I should do it. Then it just worked. So then I just thought, yo, if I'm putting energy into other things, I can put my energy into this, and it's hasn't failed me yet. Where are you from? Like, what, where, like, where exactly are you from? Uh, city. Yeah. Birmingham. Yeah, but like, where? Which end? Handsworth. Handsworth, yeah. yeah. All right, do this for me. You see, as a uh, a thirteen year old you, yeah, that is from where you're from. Paint that picture to me of what that looked like for you in your eyes as a thirteen year old you. Uh, Be honest, you know, if it's nitties, flipping, yeah. bear man hanging around, like all of that, like what what was your growing up environment in terms of that? Before you answer that, could you explain to me what you just said? <laughs> nitties and oh, like, nitties. what is all that? Oh, yeah, bring us in. Whole thing, you bring us said. in. What's that? <laughs> nitties is um, fiends. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fiends. Fiends. Oh, fiends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trap. Stabbings. Shootings come a bit later. Um, that's it, really. But at the same time, we're all still like playing football, though. So that's it, really. I think everyone's playing football. God, that's what everyone does, like in America. I either play American football or basketball, over here's football. I think look, looking at, looking at um, him, I find it so weird in a way. There was a guy who I played with on my team, my late, latest stage of my career, his name was Rashid Hagman. And I mean, you look exactly like him, bro. <laughs> and he was like my younger brother. So I'm looking at you and, I, and all I can see is him. I can see Rashid. And I almost want to say, hey, Rashid. But, you know, obviously you're not Rashid. <laughs> so um, it's, it's just um, interesting. But your family, your mother was in the music industry. Is, yeah, is this yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. So did you take any inspiration from seeing what, what uh, she did? Yeah, yeah, of course. I think naturally, even without trying to go out my way and do it, it just happened organically. Um, but I think experience just came from her, just being around her when I was growing up as well. 
A lot of my family was used to do music, like play instruments and stuff, so I think it was just one of them things, really. At what point did you know that you were like, because you, you, you're like a very, very talented MC. Like, at what point was this just like something that came naturally to you or you had to work on it constantly to become who you are right now? I think it's more natural, you know. Mm. I don't want to, I don't like forcing it. I think when I force it, that's when mm. the songs don't come as good as they mm. could be. So sometimes I might just not rap at all and then one day something will just come and then I prefer to do it like that. Yeah. Because when I start trying to overdo it and overthink it, it doesn't work. But I, I've always been curious, like, how do you know, like, you can rap? Like, what, when I was young, I tried to rap, right? Like, I think we all, yeah, yeah. We all tried to rap. Man. All of us athletes yeah, try to rap. Like, <laughs> I, I suck at this. I'm terrible. Like, how do you know that this is something that you can do? I don't think you know, you know. It's, other, it's the reaction from other people. Mm. I think everyone thinks they can rap in their head, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, like when I you're growing too. up, everyone thinks they're, they're, they're cold, but it's not that. I think it's more like, if I s s rap s a song now, and then there's 20 people in the room and 12 of them are saying, oh, that's mad. I'll play my songs to certain people as well. And I use them as like, trustees, if that makes sense. And then I, I trust their words. So if they say shit, then it's shit. If they say <laughs> it's lit, then it's lit. Yeah, yeah. Just like that, really. Do you think your preference of like your sound came from like growing up and the the music you heard as a, as a as a child? Like, do you kind of hear that influence and in things you like now and the music you put out? Yeah, I could say that, you know. And the environment, I think, because my sounds a bit like Jamaican influenced mm -hmm. as well. So I think that's more environment. The way I speak, I put that into the song. So sometimes the words that I say is different. I'm from Birmingham anyway, so. It's completely different to London and all of that anyway. But then on top of that, the lingo is completely different. So yeah, that different house. Yeah, just educate, like the, yeah. tell us, like how? Just like the slang that I would use is just completely different to what other cities would say and stuff like that. Like, I don't, sometimes other people don't understand what I'm saying. Is there a difference in culture or is it just slang? Not culture, really. No, nah, I feel like it's quite the same. I, it's, it's the same, it's but the, at the same the time, though, Birmingham's more Caribbean. Fact. There's a lot of more Caribbean people, more so than Africans. So, what London's, not saying it's more Africans, but compared to Birmingham, we don't really have that much African culture, so it's like everybody wants to be a Yardie in Birmingham. Okay, now, now you got me excited, right? I'm, I'm African, I'm from Nigeria. Yeah. So, the difference basically is, you would say Birmingham is more where the Caribbeans are, yeah. and London is where most of the Africans are. It, I would... Both. Yeah, I mean... London's maybe got... Brum's got... Right. One -ish. Look, yeah. We've got Africans, but don't get it twisted, but the majority, especially growing up, if you, if you wasn't Caribbean, you were saying you was Caribbean anyway. Right, yeah, well, that was the same in London, though. Oh, yeah, wow. Well, yeah. yeah, in London, they don't never get this twisted. Enough Africans was Jamaican yeah, yeah, from yeah. Tivoli Garden. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Enough of them was from Kingston, but they weren't. But the thing is, though, Maybe, I don't know actually, I don't, I don't know this is a fact, I'm just saying maybe how it feels, yeah, is that like Brom is where you would find like a lot of Caribbeans, yeah, there. But in, in London, it's probably a lot more multicultural in terms of blackness and like where you, the countries that you come from. I find, I, that's the thing that I, I really find interesting about being here is that in America, right, like the black people there are like black Americans. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. They don't really associate themselves with, you know, Caribbean or African. There's a lack or, of connectivity. It, it, yeah, it's Cause just. Because you, you don't really, they, they don't really know, do they? No, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But here they do. Even the ones who are born here still identify with, whether it's the Caribbean islands or whether it's, you know, yeah. African, like they, they, they identify with that more so than, British, but yeah. in America, it's like American. black America. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's a clo I think here there's a closeness to your culture, not knowing your your culture, and losing sight of that, losing the connection with that. I think that's a terrible thing. Yeah. You see people who come from the Caribbean or people who come from Africa, and our countries aren't. It's not like our countries are, you know, the greatest countries, you know, on earth. 
a lot of us are struggling, right? But you see us in, whether it's here or whether it's in America, and we're walking around with our heads up like we own the place, right? And the only reason why is just a simple understanding of where you come from. Just that connection to your culture gives you something that other people just may not have. And I think if you carry that within you, it allows you to succeed, man, because you know where you're from, you know all the things that have, have happened where you're from, and you're in a different environment, but you're still able to succeed just because you know where you're from. Yeah, you yeah. don't have that in some, in some form or fashion, man. There, there's something missing. You don't really quite know 100% what it is, but oh, there's God, something God. inside you that's, that's just not, Yeah. and you gotta connect back to it, man. I wanna move this to like, knowing and listening to your music here, yeah and hearing how environmental it is and like the stuff that is happening in your ends and that, yeah. Like how, at what point was you able to say, you know what, yeah, I need to step away from the politics that are happening in the street and focus more so on doing music. Whatever's happening, like whatever politics is happening, you can turn a blind eye now and say, I'm not involved, but it's just because you've gone, people ain't gonna feel the same way. Facts. So it doesn't matter if you say, I'm finished, whatever. If that same person that you had a problem with last month sees you, it's gonna be the same thing. And then England's not even big enough to even, like, just disappear. And then at the, on top of that as well, when you come from, like, Bir like wherever, but, like, Birmingham's a small city where everybody is it's congested, so not, not everybody makes it. Not even not everybody makes it, but not everybody gets to a certain level. So it's like, when you do elevate, you're going to get more haters. So even if you didn't even have that much problems before, now that you're on this pedal stool now, you got a next 10,000 people that hate you just because you're on the screen, you look like you got money, you got a new chain, because obviously they don't have a chain. Yeah. I never had a chain before. I might have been thinking the same way. Mm. So it's just, it's catch 22. Who, who, who's this in here? Uh, chain right there. It's my great grandparents. Why? Why? Why did you put them inside that? <laughs> uh, the current. I was just. I always wanted to, you know. When I was a kid, I always said I wanted to put them on a chain. Mm. They died when I was like eleven. Yeah. So well, I, was, I just vowed to myself that was the first thing I wanted to do. You were very close to them. Yeah, or? yeah, very. So it means a lot to me. So I, just, I don't have any tattoos in it. So it's like that's your team. Yeah. That's so dope. Hey, that's mad. Do you know why I spotted you? Because my great grandmother, she's still alive. She's 103 years old. Yeah. Deep one, actually, yeah. So imagine she's got a picture of her grandparents, and he was, her, her granddad was a white man who was a slave owner. Yeah. Imagine that. I got a picture of him wow. in the yard, sit on a horse. I might, yeah. That is, I was going to say I might fling that in of now, but that's too deep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's mad. Like, their whole reality was completely different but to ours, but theirs has, a co has in some way contributed to where you're at today, which is crazy. Yeah, 100%. I haven't had to face this challenge, so I'm interested. Obviously, you're progressing. You're doing your music thing. I like the fact that you said you don't really have a, the expectations aren't, aren't your roadmap. You're kind of taking it as it comes. But you mm. said, you know, dealing with the environment and you might want to move on but yet other people don't. I, how do you process that or, and manage that? Because that, that's very interesting, mm. a very interesting challenge. I think it starts with like you first and foremost, how you think, but also like the company that you have around you as well. So you know like if, if your friends know that you're en route somewhere in life and that could obviously impact them also, they shouldn't be even putting you in certain positions or right. showing you about certain things because realistically once you get there you can help them they can because they was doing the same thing that you're doing well they're doing the same thing that you was doing the other day so as long as they can push you positively to the top when you get to the top you can bring everybody in why not you obviously you can't bring everybody in your life but as much people as you can mm -hmm. yeah this is left field. What, what, what do you do like in your free time, personal life, something that kind of influences your music? Something that like nobody would think about. Uh, I feel like you've got something going on. It's just like, man, I do this and, and 
for fun, you just doing, what, what, what would it be? Uh, I'm just chilling, really. <laughs> that's my fun time. Is that where, time. that's yeah, where the yeah. process happens. That's yeah, where you start to, I'm it clicks. At, I'm just at home, chilling, watching Pimple Popper. That's what, what the hell is that? You know them, the doctor, doctor that doctor. pops the pimples. What? I love that show. <laughs> I told you I knew. <laughs> it sucks you in, doesn't it? You just yeah, yeah, yeah. watch it all day. <laughs> it is the worst habit. I, I'm back. Dr. Pimple Pop. Oh, man, it's... It's a little slow. What is it like? What do you mean? You know them, them doctors that pop the, the pimples, yeah. but then you know them people that have bear. You just watch them and the bear stuff comes up. Oh my oh. God, that is... I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Boys, don't let them... Don't let them... <laughs> It's a big thing, man. Yes. Is it, yeah? <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. Have you ever come up with any lyrics while watching that? <laughs> I probably have, you know, because I was watching That's today. coming in, that's going to be in a bar, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Pimple Popper, that is 100% in a bar. That is 100% in a bar. We talked about this with Miss La Familia, yeah? Mm. Is that, like, at one point, people from Brom, Manchester, outside of London weren't really getting a look in like that. Like, and maybe even now still, there might be a small element of arrogance from, like, Londoners and that. But now you're seeing man really, really cutting through. Did you sense an element of that, like, arrogance from, or I don't want to necessarily say arrogance, I don't want to put words in your mouth too much. You can say however you want to say it, yeah? But almost that hierarchy thing of feeling like, rah, because I'm not from London, it's going to be more difficult for me. Yeah, 100%. But I think by the time I started making music, it was a little bit easier. There's still, like, obviously, because when London's a big city, isn't it? It's the main place. So if you're not from London, whatever you're rapping about is void to everyone in London. They think you're just telling lies or they can't understand the accent. Then the accent, they're going to laugh because why is he rapping with that accent? Mm. There's going to be a million things. But then once you push through that barrier now, it's the same, really. But it's still, yeah, it's, there's a, it's still hard, though. Yeah. But I think bef probably like f five years ago, it would have been way harder. Yeah, there's always been that, like, that thing of, oh, yeah, I don't understand that accent, these men are not this, that. That's so air to me, though. Because men, men love young thug, bro. <laughs> like, men don't even know what the, half the things that young <laughs> thug says, bro. Yeah. Little baby and then man. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Men know what some dons from <laughs> Brom is saying. And really, in essence as well, like, you know, what you were saying about, you know, you're lying and stuff like that. Like, bro, like it's... Birmingham and some of certain places are not a place to joke around with. Like, do you know what I mean? It's it's very serious around there, and it's so it's it's like commendable that you've managed to like get out of that and put yourself in a position where people actually proper 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 check for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And put together a body of work here that like is very cohesive and and consistent, and it shows that you stand for something as well. What's been the highlight for you so far? The tape. Because I think I was started end of 019, so I've been putting out single, single, single features as well, a lot. So and then I think people doubted if I could create a body of work, but then now I've released it. I haven't really had that much. I haven't really, I haven't really seen any bad feedback like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably been the highlight, yeah. How are you dealing with like? How are you dealing with everyone knowing you now? I don't like it. Innit? But it's just. Well, it is. You can't stop that. You can't what, change what is it you don't like about it, though? Why? It's just, you can just walk into a room, everybody knows you, and you don't know them, but you don't know how they're going to react to you. And people don't know how to... People will see you and don't know... I don't know, it's like they don't know... They might even want to take a picture, but because they don't want to seem like a fan, but they are a fan. Mm. Not in a bad way, but they are a fan, obviously. The, it comes across negative, but then you don't know. You don't know how, how it's coming across. You don't know if this person don't like you for whatever reason, or they do like your music. But then you gotta do that with everything. Have you had to adjust kind of your personality because of that? Because that, that that seems that's hard, right? You, you're in a room, and everybody's looking at you, thinking they already know you, and you haven't even got a chance to yeah. present yourself. Yeah. Um, at first, it's hard because you're thinking, why is everyone looking, or why is everyone whatever, but you get used to it, but at the same time, you just, 
got to move accordingly. Do you know what element of that is? It's a PTSD, you know. You know when you, like, when you come from a certain place, yeah, and you're so used to being in an environment where if someone's looking at you a certain way, it usually means something. Mm. It usually means something. And then all of a sudden now, you flip in, you make a tune, you throw a project out, whatever, and then all of this, everything just changes. And now you go out into the, the big world, yeah, and people are looking at you. You don't know necessarily, like, what, like why are you looking at me like that for? Your, your, your brain will process it differently. I was speaking to Louis from I think Western. that's a misconception. I think that it's all based on the individual's experience. Go. Um, we all live in our own body. We, right. know, we know how the world reacts to us. And that's what I found very interesting. I've never had that kind of level of celebrity where uh, people are, you know, so engaged with your music. When they look at you, they, they might feel like they know you, but they haven't even had a conversation with you. So his experience is going to be different than mine and, right. how, and, and how I see the world and view the world and how the world views me. So I, I think finding out individually how that, how we react to that is the key. Yeah. That, and, and we all have to go through that journey because it's different. I mean, case in point, in, in, in America, OC is, you can't walk down the street in New York. We're on the same team. I can. I was able to live and do everything I wanted to do. And a guy might see my name or my tattoos and be like, oh, you're Jason Bell that plays for the Giants. He couldn't do anything. Mm. We had to live differently. So I got all the, all, I had all the fun because I could hide out. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. couldn't. Yeah. Mm. You know, so it's just, and he couldn't, you know, when he walked in the room, oh, I know OC. I don't know Jay, I don't know Jay Bell. So uh, I could now then prove to you or you had to take me for what I was right then and there. And I feel like that's, that, is, that is very difficult. That would be challenging. Yeah. I find it very interesting, you know, the more I discuss with people about the UK and the culture and whether it's Birmingham or, you know, London or Manchester, there's a lot of, there's a lot of craziness going on, man. And people, you don't look at the UK like that from the outside, 100%. right? You don't, you don't look Bam, at it like that. They, they still think it's just queen... Tea. <laughs> tea. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Tea bags and that. You understand what it's I'm saying? It's real out here. Like, um, it's, it's real. Yeah. As weird as it sounds, it must just feel weird. Because as you said, everyone knows you and you don't know no one. So you don't know what people's motives are. You don't know what they're trying to get from you or whether it's just like, just pure love. It's always going to be like that though and it's hard to decipher that. But... You think you, you would have to do that anyway, mm. really, but it's just more so now because now everybody knows you. Because if you was just on the roads and you walked into the room and there's, there's 10 black youths in there, straight away you need to be analysing raw. He, he looks like he's not on shit. He looks like he's on it. He looks like he's got his shank. He looks like he works in McDonald's. Can we do this then? Because this is interesting. Mm. You see how you said, like, you walk in the room now and you see 10 black youths straight away in your head, you're a bit alert. Isn't that mad? I'll tell you what I find mad about that, is that if we were in America and I walked into a room and I saw that, I would be thinking the same thing. But out here, I wouldn't think anything. I'd just be... Why is that? You I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but I don't know. But I would feel more comfortable if I walked into a room around just a bunch of people here than I would in America. Like in America, I would be, I would be on edge. Would you be on edge if you walked into a room with 10 white men? Oh, even more so. Right. <laughs> would you? No. Go. <laughs> I, I think where I'm from, Long Beach, California, I grew up around everybody. So I get uncomfortable when I'm around one thing for too long. I want every, I need to see it all. So I like putting myself in a, in a situation where I'm an outsider. It, it's something that fascinates me, so. I know where you're going with this. Are you, would you be more alert if you walked into a room of 10 black people? No. I'm alert, I can t I'm alert by the circumstance. 
Right. It doesn't matter what you look like. It matters where I am and what's happening. The color of your skin does not determine what I feel like the outcome of this environment is going to provide. That has nothing to do with it. That I is, would be foolish in my, I would no, because, right. you know. Just, but there's black trauma though, no? If, and it's conditioning, isn't it? Because if, if we walk, if you go into a room, yeah, 10 black youths that look like me, you, like, why are we so... I could read what's them my man on? No, no, Like, what's no, my man on? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. No, no. Go. No, no. There's 10 black people in this room right now. Right? Yeah, we work with them. Good. Oh, that, 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 that makes it safe. <laughs> Good. That, that, that changes everything. That changes right. everything. So ask him, though. See, when you walked in, yeah. how did you feel? But you knew he was coming to work. Yeah. Did you right, feel so uncomfortable? Different. No, but it's still the same, though. Go. Because at the same time... The cameraman might have a friend. <laughs> the cameraman's white. Both of them are white. Yeah, does it, does it matter? Yeah, I hear White it. people still commit crime, innit? Facts. The, I, white, I, the, the white man might call the police if anything happens. True. <laughs> Not even, but it's just, it just yeah. it's anybody really, but it's just, yeah. whatever room it is, it's just, that's what it is. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I, I feel like it's, it depends on, I think we all stereotype people. We all stereotype people. It's we all do. Yeah, then we all do. If I walked in here and there was ten people who I, who I had, <laughs> you know, because in America I grew up in the hood, right? And if I walked in and I saw ten people who looked like they were in that neighborhood that I came from in America, I would be, I would be, I would be on edge. I would be alert. You understand what I mean? But then if I come in and it's like. You can't be this hotel. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, like, this, this is, is cool. Some dodgy it's okay here. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Right? So it depends on the environment that you walk into, yeah. I believe. But then that's not good, though, at the same time. It's terrible. Because at the same, on the other hand, if you walk in and you think everything's good, that means you're just getting complacent. 100%. And never, it, like, this and is why it's probably the people in here that'll probably do the worst yeah. things to right. you. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is why some areas are over-policed and the police go in that area, and all of a sudden, their intention changes. No, no, hold on now, Jay. Go on, go on. Hold on now, hold on, go hold on. on. I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I do, let, let me know, you're correct. Okay. You're correct. But? But, the fact of the matter is, in those kind of areas, yes. Crime is higher than in other areas. Crime is everywhere. It's everywhere. There's no doubt about that. There, there is no doubt. And that if you over police an area, you're going to find more crime. But you see, if you don't police those areas, crime actually increases. There's an argument to that. It's true. So what what what, what do you what do, what do you do? Like do you? I didn't say I had a solution, Olsen. <laughs> <saying. laughs> All I know is millions is saying you dash where the police and that. From the, I don't want them in my ends. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, that I'm gonna put words into his mouth next minute. Let me quote him. We, we, me and him, we, we, we're gonna go and watch Doctor Pimple Popper. So it's all good. <laughs> There's no problem. How do you feel about that? What we just discussed right now about policing, over policing, police being in an area, crime rates, or all, all that type of stuff. Oh man. Yeah. I think go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to put your shoes on now, Chucky. <laughs> See, the problem is, yeah, is that, like, a crime exists when it's... A crime exists, yeah, to the, a certain demographic when, when it's reported, yeah? If a crime is not reported, then it's almost like it doesn't exist. So I think that when you do over-police an area, I think that it can sometimes show a almost a misconception of what is actually happening in that area compared to another. That's what I believe. However, I don't believe that, I don't believe that we could police ourselves. I don't really believe that we could do that. Okay, so. but we just sat here and we acknowledged how real things are hmm. in the areas you, like, you, you know, you're from, the areas you grew up in. It's tough, right? So these things are happening there. There's no question about it. It's not like we're just making up things and we're saying, oh, they're not getting stabbed and they're not, you know, selling drugs and they're not doing it. All those things are happening, correct? Yeah, of course. So if all those things are happening, 
the solution is either you bring in a bunch of money to help develop these areas and help give people opportunities, either you do that or police, one or the other. You, you have to do something. Yeah, but life is about balance. And that's why I think that there's a problem because if you are over policing, but you're not bringing in the money to be able to develop these communities and that, then it's, you're never going to get a good solution. You're, ne you're never going to get a good outcome out of that. Mm. But if you do bring in the money, you can't give up on the youth. You can't say, well, you know, we're bringing in money. These lot are still on smoke, so we're not doing it anymore. No, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that have been conditioned into people's minds already, which was what we were talking about before of like, I was alluding to the fact of going into a certain place and being conditioned to feel like there's danger here, sometimes because of some, the color of someone's skin. And that's because of some of the shit that we've seen in the ends of people that look like us. When in theory, what you were saying before, you can go into a room full of white man or whatever, and they're likely to be pr more detrimental to your life than anything. It, that could be the case, isn't it? But I think that like, I feel the balance is just way off. And it's almost as though people give up on the youths. And because they give up on the youths to a degree, these are the, some of the reasons why you end up get, having some of the problems that we have. In your community, well. nobody knows it better than you. So say we were to come in and say, all right, we're here to help. We, we want to do things. We want to change things. Like, what would be your advice? So I just think, me personally, not even to be negative, I just think that you can probably make it get lower by bringing in more police in, yeah? But at the same time, these crimes have been going on since whenever. Mm -hmm. So as much as you think you're going to be able to bring it down and stop it, it's never going to stop. Whatever we try and do, it doesn't matter. Because even if we stop now and say blues versus reds, that's done, finished, everyone gets along, somebody's going to walk to the shop and step on someone's shoe or somebody's going to crash into somebody's car. Anything could happen and then there's, then there's a fight, then it escalates. So it's never really going to stop. I just think the policing, the focus on all the money that they put into gangs and crime and I think they need to be putting that money into other things like they're putting a lot of money, say, you know, like to catch drug dealers. Drug, kick, drugs kill, but so do rapists. Mm. You're not putting money into going undercover and finding rapists or pedophiles. Mm. Not saying we should stop finding drug dealers. Obviously, that's nothing to do with me. Yeah. But if we're going to do that, there's a lot of other things that kill. There's rapists, pedophiles, there's other stuff. Yeah. We sell cigarettes and alcohol in the shop. Yeah, so you can't, you can't be a in <laughs> it. But that, so that, do you know, know what, as well? Never understood that. Exactly. Yeah. What and, and essentially, yeah, that's a perfect way of putting it, because the, the point that I'm just trying to make more so out of everything is just that the balance, I feel, is just way off. Mm. I don't think that you should, they should stop policing. Like, of course, these things need to happen, innit? But I just think the balance is just way off. There's, like, so much emphasis over here, and the emphasis is sometimes misplaced. And when you have misplaced emphasis, you're still going to get a whole bunch of smoke. Do you, know, do you know why that happens, though? And I'm going to give you my theory. It's not, I don't know this to be a fact, right? Go, go but on. it's just a theory. I believe that, for instance, we're here in the UK, yeah? And this country is, what is it, 79, 80% white? Yeah. Right? That's what this country is, 80% white. So by numbers, there are a tremendous amount of poor white people in this country, just by numbers. I'm not talking about percentages, yeah. just by numbers. There, there's a bunch of poor white people in this country. So the economics that you, you're going to need to address all these situations, right? You can't put money towards that without addressing these poor white people. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> and so now, the problem now becomes, they think to themselves, okay, uh, it's either we really spend money to really try to lift the economic situation of everybody, or we just do the easy thing, which is police. Oh, more police. Let's just, let's just do that, because they don't really want to address the economic situation of everybody. And so they keep on throwing the little bit of money at policing and these little band-aids that they keep on putting on people, 
when the real problem is the economic situation. And you can't address the economic situation of the black people without addressing the economic situation of those millions of poor white people also. It's just my theory. Yeah. I don't know if it's correct. Well, the one thing that I think is sick anyway is the fact that like you're just getting so much people that are coming from a certain place and changing their whole life around, like you, yeah, and also being able to put yourself in a position where you can change your brethren's lives and that as well. Because I think that that does more than anything. You do know that at some point, like, not everyone can come though. Yeah, of course. Right. Why can't everybody come? Let's sink the ship. That's for one thing. And secondly, I think the resources or money that you're going to need to bring everybody through, yeah. you're going to end up, you're not going to be through yourself by the end of it. You're going to finish. Even if you don't physically like, like bring people through, yeah? I think the path and the knowledge that you're going to be sending on to other people is as good mm -hmm. because they can learn from that. Even if they don't want to rap themselves or play f American football, whatever, yeah? At least they'll be able to see he came from the same place as me. He worked hard, he did this, whatever he did. And then he got to, made it out in it. Mm -hmm. But I can do something for you. And I'm gonna do something for you that, um, and it's only because you look so much like Rashid. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do this. And he was, he was very young. I'm, I'm saying he was massive, so I, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he was very young. And uh, he was a high draft pick and the coaches didn't really believe in him. And so, I started to be, it was, it was just like a joke, but whenever he would come out and I, I would look at him and I would, I would be like a preacher and I'll put my hands in him and I would be like, and the Lord, and the Lord, <laughs> and the Lord. And he was still, he was still shaking, it was, it was so funny, man. But he turned, I mean, he became a really good football player. Um, so I'm just gonna do that just one more time, just for you. And the Lord, <laughs> and the Lord said. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Nah, sick man. What's next for you though, bro? Um, I'm gonna work on my second tape. It's more just wanna um, get my feet in the door, like full industry. You don't feel like they're in the door yet? Yeah, I'm known, but I need to be known as mm. one, one of one of one or whatever. I'm known, but I wanna be known as He's a big artist and things like that. Not mm. just, he's, he's got some good songs. I know my goal in myself, but how I'm going to get there, I don't know, specifically. Because mm. I don't want to limit myself to, you know what it is, sometimes, yeah, when you have a high expectation and then you drop, yeah? Or, no, not even that you drop, sorry. If you have a high expectation and you don't make the expectation, the drop's very hard. But you know, like, sometimes if, I'm not saying don't have an expectation, but it's not as high or not even don't reach for the stars. But when if you do fail, it, it's not as hard. But obviously, every time you fail, you're going to climb back up. But sometimes when you think, yo, I'm going to get a number one in the next song and then you bank on it mm. and you get number 99, <laughs> you're going to be crying in it. So sometimes that's how, how I think sometimes. That's Who do you rate? Is, is, that, is that like polite? Can you can you ask? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. artists, like, who they rate? Like, who, who do you...? Uh, like, artist-wise? Yeah. Jay Huss. Yeah, that's the match. Wait, Jay Huss is the... Let me, let me tell you this, yeah. Eh, eh, eh. Where did they go? No, 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 my nigga. Yeah. Repete, repete. <laughs> Jay Huss, no, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's Jay. He's a... Once it's all said and done, oh, my God, bruv. The man's... Anyway, go on. Sorry. I think he's the... I think he's just... Goat. He's, yeah. Is he? He's, Goat. Yeah, yeah, he's mad. He's, he's mad. on that. He's, he's on that. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. So it's not Stormzy. Stormzy isn't. It's just, that's my yeah, person. Nah, Stormzy's up. <laughs> nah, Stormzy's the guy still. Stormzy's, Stormzy's the probably the biggest, isn't it? Yeah. He's probably like you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he probably is the biggest. But I think just me. Do you reckon Dave's slightly, you reckon Dave's slightly yamming the food a tiny bit? Mm. Like yeah, that. but Dave's album was good. Yeah, Dave, yeah, yeah. Slight, just yeah. the, uh, you reckon he's close to me? Nah, he's definitely, he's probably on par, or he might even be bigger, but. Than Stormzy or than Jay Huss? No, no, nah, nah, Stormzy. Than Stormzy. Yeah, Storm, yeah, Dave's there, yeah, but I think Stormzy's just, his things just completely just gone, like he's finished. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
like commercial. Like. Mad. But actually, Dave is doing tours in America and stuff. So but I don't this know. is the thing, because I think yeah, I don't know. Like Europe wise, I think Storm Storms has got it to a different degree. Mm. Now. Even like, Africa, I think, different maybe, and Africa as well. Yeah, and Africa as well. I think what, what Dave's got in his, in his arsenal is that like he seems to be really getting America now as well, like in Canada. Okay, we did something weird, weird and I found this surprising. Go on. We did something with Stormzy at Super Bowl. We went to America and we're walking around with Stormzy and nobody knew who he was. Right. And I, I, I couldn't understand when, when, what, what was when going on. When was this, on. sorry, what year? This is like two, I think it might have been two years ago. About two years Interesting. ago. Interesting. And nobody there knew who he was. And, you know, people are running up to me. They're asking me for my autograph. And in my head, I'm like... Yeah, this is the guy. This is, this is Stormzy, right? Yeah. Houston, right? Was it Houston? I think maybe, yeah. Might have been Houston. I think it was Houston. Mm-hmm. Is it Houston? Mm-hmm. It's in Texas. I yeah. And I, I, just, I just found that so strange, right? Because here, he's so big. But then you go to America. Like, a, a lot of, um, like, UK rap artists don't really break out in America. Like pop, they do. But like rap artists don't really break out in America. No. Americans don't want to hear what we're saying, that's why. It's too difficult. Yeah, you're right. And I, but no, at the same time, because Skepta, did, it, Skepta did a madness over there. Skepta yeah. did a madness over there. Yeah, but is he they walking around? I don't think he's going to... Not till I got here. Skepta is. I don't think he's going to walk around and people are going to know him, though. Nah, nobody would know who Skepta is walking around in America. Nobody. Maybe, maybe New York. Maybe, maybe New York, yeah. With and ASAP, LA. With ASAP Rocky and that kind right, of... Right, yeah, that sort of circle. Well, Do I you know why they might for Dave, though? Top Boy. Yep. Exactly. Oh, yeah, true. The film Top Boy. Yeah. But does that make you feel a certain type of way? That in America, they might not rate you the way because you, you guys are like sick artists and i didn't know that till i came up i hope not <laughs> answer that correctly what, what, what? do you care about them man over there like that obviously not not that i don't not no no just care. Care like that. Yo, why, why would not you like not that. care it's, just, no, it's not that you're not caring but go on i'll let you finish i just think yeah it's just it's just mad you know because you could have an american yeah that's doing auto tune yeah that is not saying nothing. <laughs> he's, 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 he's just drinking lean here. Yeah. He's, he's not saying shit, yeah? Nothing. Then, so you could have Dave. Now, Dave's doing whatever Dave's doing. <laughs> and Dave's saying a lot, yeah? And d- 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 you say, no, that's shit. It don't make sense, but... I don't... I think England... We did push it on ourselves anyway, because we want to be like that. Kinda. So we're pushing the Americans more than we're pushing the uh, people. And that's all we're listening to, isn't it? Right. The reason why I mention this here is because I think at one point <laughs> that was that was the goal. Like everyone was focused on trying to blow it over there. And I think things changed a lot for the better, more so, when everyone just started focusing on our thing. Mm. Yep. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let's just do our thing. And if it, whatever happens, happens. If it works, it works. It's amazing. So, of course, it's nice when you get that. You know what I mean? When, you know, they get those type of accolades or whatever and the recognition and you've got them, the artists and stuff collaborating and stuff. But I feel like the most important thing is to do your thing, which is one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why your project actually, for me, is in my own personal top 10. If you are authentically yourself and you are consistently being that way and being persistent, ultimately it puts you in the, in the strongest position because if you just follow this thing and you try to add bits and pieces of that, once that dies, you die with it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think it's more than that, you know, I think it's just more so that, because England's so small, yeah? When you do get to the top, I think, you know, because you can be so big in England, but you're not big, say, in America where everyone cares about, I think subconsciously you might not feel as accomplished yeah. as you are. I understand. I think that's what it is, because it's like, England's tiny, in it? So once Stormzy finishes England, where's he going to go from here? Well, you if America don't, no, but, yeah, but. I know. <laughs> he's going to do Europe. Yeah, he's yeah. probably done that already. Yeah, he's so, done that still. But didn't, didn't they he's done, steal? He's done, all, he's done all of it. Didn't they steal, like, some of the UK uh, sound, like, is it drill or grime? Didn't, 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 like, a group in America, isn't there, like, Chicago drill? Did that come first Chicago here started, or there? Nah. Chicago started, then okay. London. 
jumped on it. Go but on. then I think New York jumped on from London a bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that so pop New York smoking. took it from here. Huh? So New York took it from here. I believe so. I don't the know. Sound. Yeah. The sound. The sound. The way they was doing it, I think, and the dances and stuff like that. But now they've, that's what I'm saying, but now New York smoked it because they're just everywhere in it. So it's one of them things you can't really battle it. I think the, the, if anything, after you do the UK, Europe, I think best bet's Canada. Because they, Canada, well, they understand they yeah, fully what's yeah, going yeah. on. They get it. And Canada's massive. So we got to get out of here. But my bro, I appreciate you coming down and sitting down with man still. And all the best with it all, man. You yeah, know what I mean? Respect, man. You've like got off to a, like a flying start, bro. You know what I mean? Just stay on the right track. You've got a plan. There's light there. Man's lit. You get me? <laughs> Gallon that. Come on, G. <laughs> G. And the Lord. And the Lord. <laughs> I had a feeling he was going to do that. <laughs> Jason. Man. Another wonderful conversation, man. Appreciate it. I learned a lot, actually, man. Thank you. Oh, see. Oh, dang. <laughs>